Hi, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am here to do some more snow dyeing. But this time, we are gonna dye six grams of silk hankies. I am going to, there's a little bit of discoloration on this hanky to begin with, but hopefully we will completely cover it up with some really cool Kool-Aid and make a really cool pattern on it. So I'm gonna start by pre-soaking these hankies in cool tap water. There's no vinegar or any other acid source added to this. The acid that we will need to successfully dye the silk hankies is entirely located in the Kool-Aid. So right now you can see how some of the hankies are translucent. Um, and you can see through it already, and some are more opaque. The silk has been appropriately soaked through once all of it looks translucent. And this can take a while, so just be patient. You will also need some, like a, I use an oven cookie uh, cooling rack. You'll need a microsafe plate, wave safe plate, and some saran wrap, and a bowl. And, I, and of course you need some snow and I will be taking care of this in my bathtub. The silk hanky is totally um, saturated and I have laid it on top of a cookie sheet over a bowl just to help catch the liquid and see what the run through looks like. Um, you wanna be very careful when you're moving wet silk hankies. Um, they can be very delicate. Uh, unlike Last time I was able to get some more fresh powder, which is totally awesome because it is much easier to spread and cover the fiber with fresh snow than it is to cover um, wet, wet, wet snow. Hopefully the weight of the snow does not cause the silk hankies to rip but I am just gently adding the snow, trying to make sure to cover all the edges of my hanky. This should also melt um, faster than the last experiment that I did. The snow, all right. Um, I'm wearing gloves just so I don't stain myself with Kool-Aid. So this is only six grams of fiber, but I still decided I wanted to use two packets of Kool-Aid. And I think I'm gonna go for kind of a starburst. I'm starting with the lemonade. And I'm gonna just open the packet and sprinkle it onto the snow. Now for the the cherry food or the cherry Kool-Aid. Cherry Kool-Aid, I believe, is one of the most concentrated um, in terms of the amount of dye that there is. Where pink lemonade has the same dye molecule but is less concentrated. Whoops, that was heavy in that region. I ran out. <laughs> I kind of wanted to put more in the center as well, but I know that two packets of Kool-Aid are absolutely sufficient to dye six grams of fiber. Um, in more recently I use I think five packets total on a hundred grams. So anyway, I will probably go to bed before this finishes melting, but um, this We'll just sit overnight, and with the citric acid in the Kool-Aid and the food-based dyes um, in there, we should hopefully end up with some gloriously dyed silk hankies. We are an hour and a half in, and you can see some success. The edges of the hanky are exposed, and we've got some color in them but we also have some edges that are white. 
And this is where I think having a window screen or something to have your fiber on so then you can really pile the snow over the edges and clear the margin would come in handy. Well, here we have it. The snow has all melted and we've got a mostly red silk hanky and the yellow has been a bit overwhelmed by the amount of red. But I think that, you know, lemonade food coloring has the equivalent of like one drop of yellow food coloring and the cherry has like 10. So it's understandable that the yellow got overwhelmed. But the overall effect is really, really cool. And amazingly, and I was afraid, and I woke up in the middle of the night afraid that this would have um, dried out overnight, but it is still very much saturated. So that is really good. Um, but now, I'm just sticking a plate. No, you can't even see the plate. But I'm now going to carefully pick up the hanky and transfer it. I'll show you. Just onto a microwave safe plate. And there is some debris, but we'll take care of that as we wash it out after the fact because snowflakes nucleate on something. So like if you melt pure snow, there will be some dirt in it. Now with silk and heat, you need to be a little more careful. So I am going to set this in the microwave at 30 second increments. And I don't want it to get as piping hot as I would let wool. I mean, probably you don't want to get wool that hot either, um, but I've actually never put silk in the microwave before. But I do know that too much heat can help, or can help, can um, cause you to lose some luster. So anyway, I've applied some plastic wrap over the top, and I'm going to microwave it. 30 seconds in the microwave was all it took for this to get nice and hot. I'm now going to let this cool completely to room temperature. Another thought, you know, it's a little excessive to let this sit overnight, but I mean, I was going to wake up in the middle of the night to, to finish it. But it took, I can take hours for, even once all the snow has melted, for the fiber to come back up to room temperature um, before you would want to heat it. Um, I don't know if it's because my bathroom is the coldest room in our house and believe me it is really cold in here um, or what, but that's just something to keep in mind. I'm adding some dish soap to the lukewarm, just not freezing cold water. And now we can add our silk hanky. Oh cool, there's like this big patch of white on the back that I didn't notice before. Kind of swirl it around in there. So there's some cloudiness, but not a lot of color is coming out. Remember, you want to be very delicate with the silk. Um, the silk hankies snag really, really easily. Um, but anyway, we will rinse this until the water runs clear. There is a lot of color coming out. Well, I don't know about a lot, but there is some color coming out. Um, but we will keep rinsing until the water runs clear and there's no soap left in the fiber. Uh, and then we'll hang it up to dry. Here it is, our dry silk hanky. You can see when I flip it over, 
that we got good penetration of the color. There is a white spot from the center area in addition to some of the edges. But overall, we got color all the way through our hankies. Uh, the, I'm always amazed by how the color is much less vibrant in the final product than it is in the initial, like, than it is when it is still wet. So I guess that just means that the silk can take a lot more dye than you might expect. But we were able to successfully show that you can use snow to dye silk hankies with Kool-Aid. Thank you for sticking with me in this chilly dyeing experiment. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz.